Good morning and welcome to a very special edition of 3 Plus U. We have taken a road trip this morning. We are at the Cherokee National Forest about to get on board the Hiawassee River Scenic Railroad. It's all part of the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum. We're going to take you on a fantastic tour this morning so that you too are going to want to climb aboard. <laughs> And we have climbed on board and we are in the lap of luxury. Robert Duncan has kindly invited us onto his beautiful train. We are in the Algonquin car, is that right? The Algonquin Park, yes ma'am. This is a beautiful spot. We're kind of in the lap of luxury because all around us, Robert, as people are enjoying this beautiful ride that we'll talk about, is nothing but the scenery in this domed car. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the scenery of the Cherokee National Forest is what we really push on this car. Um, you see everything that you get, the mountain scenery, you can see the river scenery. So it's all great. And it's not uncommon to pass by a tree and see a bald eagle setting up in the tree. And you are literally, because we are up. Eye to eye with the bald eagles. I think that the history of this uh, loop is so fascinating to me. I've told you multiple times in our conversation this morning that I am truly in over my head. Yes. Uh, but that's okay, you're the one to educate me. These tracks are 132 years old? Yes, ma'am. Uh, these tracks, the idea for this whole railroad was the city leaders of Knoxville. They wanted to do a straight route to Atlanta. Before this route was built, you had to ship your freight through Chattanooga and then on to Atlanta. Okay. So they came up with the idea of building a straight route and they contracted with two different railroads in 1885, the Knoxville Southern and the Marietta and North Georgia. Okay. The Knoxville Southern started in Knoxville, worked their way south. The Marietta North Georgia had already worked their way up to Canton, Georgia, and they worked their way north. And they met in an area that we go through called Appalachia Station. You talk about this direct route between the two cities, yet the very nature of the loop, I always thought that it was a, a turnaround spot for the train. That's incorrect. No, that's, that's incorrect. What the loop does is gains altitude up a mountain. Imagine a spiral going up the mountain at a fairly steep grade, mm -hmm. and uh, that's how they got around that mountain. Originally, they had a series of switchbacks up the mountain, right. which meant the train could only carry a certain amount of cars with them, and they literally had to zigzag back and forth up the mountain. And that was a terribly slow way to get a, a train up the mountain. You are a mass of information. And I know <laughs> that you know that. You've been part of the railroad for 18 years. Yes, ma'am. Do When people come and they buy a ticket, do they have a chance to hear some of this history yes, from you? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we do a narration along the way. We, had, we do the narration to point out the history. We point out historical areas and historical buildings along the route and uh, just let everybody know about the history because there is a lot of history here. And that we almost lost it. You said that these yes, tracks we were almost taken from us. When uh, the copper operations ceased in Copper Hill, CSX abandoned the tracks. And one of the ideas was to make a rail to trail that would involve pulling up all the tracks and just making a hiking rail. Mm -hmm. Well, we at the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum knew that a lot more people could enjoy this scenery if we kept the rails down. Uh, you know that people's time is precious, but also they want to savor every minute that they're here. So you have a short loop that's about four hours long. Yes, ma'am. Then that you mentioned Copper a couple of times. Copper Hill, they that's will go our into big Copper trip Hill. where we go all the way from Delano to Copper Hill, right on the Georgia-Tennessee line and come back. It generally takes about eight hours. Do you ever get tired of feeling like you are living history every day? <laughs> no, but uh, I learned it from the best. Well, every single one of us who is here today has been saying we can't wait to get our ticket to ride. Uh, again, we are in the adult section, but let's do go downstairs and check in with Josh because for all of you out there with kids and grandchildren, you're going to want to see and hear from him. <laughs> So we have come downstairs, so to speak, and we are in the passenger car, one of the passenger cars. This is Josh Monroe, uh, who kind of, you're, you're a trainman here mm -hmm. uh, with the yes. railroad, but you are also a teacher. You're, you have been, up until recently, a chemistry teacher in town. So your love of, of teaching people what you know uh, runs through to your job here. 
Yes, I, I tell people that I traded my classroom in for one that has wheels and a 2,000 horsepower engine. <laughs> well, that classroom is a, it, that's a, the right word because when you are a passenger on the train, uh, and the section where we are now, Josh, is where families can come. Yes. And the Algonquin where Robert and I were talking, that's adult only. Mm -hmm. uh, but down here, you get to hear a lot of little ones uh, yes. talking and getting excited about what they see. So when you're giving the history and the narration, it's very important to the experience. Definitely, because we've got so many different things going on outside. We've got uh, three ghost towns that we travel through. Uh, there's no buildings left, but we do go through the sites and we talk about the history of the sites. We go through um, one town that is still there, Reliance, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and talk about its history with logging and farming. And uh, we go through the Appalachia Powerhouse and past the Appalachia Dam which oddly enough, it's a hydroelectric plant, but the dam is nine miles away from the generators. Really? Yes, the water has to go nine miles through pipe, um, which is actually large enough to put the train in. It's wow. a very big pipe. And um, it also causes the water in the Hiawassee River to be very cold because it's- That's why it's so cold. Yes, because it comes from the bottom of Lake Appalachia and then goes nine miles through the mountains with no sunlight. For anyone who's ever gone tubing, now you have your answer for why mm. it's so cold. Now you know. So um, when you talk about the water, I mean, you do go along the river line, right? I mean, you get to yes. see that. So it, your scenery changes with the seasons. So does the wildlife. You see everything on this train. Yes, we have uh, bald eagles, osprey. Um, we've had some lucky people be able to see bears. I haven't got to see one yet. I'm, yeah, you're counting I'm on more, that. I'm counting on it, yes. Um, deer, um, the feral hogs. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a, a mother feral hog and her piglets up really? in the loop in the bald spot that we've had several sightings of. You know, it's funny, you take, we think about in Chattanooga, we're the scenic city, right? So you think about our mountains being so beautiful, and they are, you can forget the difference in leaving the city behind and coming into, we're in the Cherokee National Forest. Yes. So it's a rare opportunity to cut through and really see raw nature mm -hmm. out your window. And there's no road access to about half the area that the train goes through so you don't have people out there disturbing the wildlife. And so mm -hmm. if the train is coasting downhill quite enough, we can sneak up on them. Uh, the same is true for the plant life that you see, a lot of beautiful rhododendron and that type of thing. Uh, yes, yes, rhododendron blooms in um, June. Mm -hmm. Before it is the mountain laurel. And then the spring ephemeral wildflowers start in about mid-April all the way through May. And they can put on a color show that rivals the fall colors. Really? Yes. So you are the dad of two boys. Yes. Nine and 13. Mm -hmm. Do they think you have the coolest job they ever saw? Yes, they do. <laughs> When, you, um, when you're doing the narration, I guess you don't have the chance to really be in the cars to hear what people are saying, do you? I do walk through the second half. I have a picture of the loop that I go from seat to seat and show everyone and explain okay. why the loop doesn't turn the train, that it circles the mountain to climb the mountain. Do you ever get tired of hearing the same comments? I'm sure you hear the same thing from the kids. Uh, I'm sure there aren't enough wows in the English <laughs> language to capture it all. No, there's not because it's, well, it changes with the seasons. Every weekend is different mm -hmm. and there's just so much to see. And I love watching the happy faces of the families and the kids. Is everyone squished against the window? Oh, definitely. <laughs> Where else would you be? Well, I can't thank you enough for letting us come on board. Um, I think it is a, a great end of summer experience for people to have a chance to be a part of. Really, any season of the year, this mm -hmm. is the place you want to yep. be. Um, even after the leaves fall, because then you have a clear view of the mm -hmm. sites and there's no wildlife hiding behind leaves because well, they're there. Thank you so much for letting mm -hmm. us come on board. And we're not through with the conversation because this is kind of your idea of what you see when you're inside. But everybody dreams of having that coveted spot in the cab as the engineer. So we're going to take you inside the cab and talk with Dave Stoika, who is lucky enough to be the man who gets to push the whistle on the train when we come back. Thank you so much, Josh. You're welcome. 
Let's be honest, moving is stressful, but when you choose my guaranteed offer, I come to your home. I determine a price that I can give you for the home. It's an as is cash offer and you simply get to pick the moving day. Call me Local Mark today. You only get so many opportunities to follow your dreams, to make your mark in this world, to lay the foundation for your future. So never stop dreaming, creating, advancing, at Chattanooga College, we prepare our students to make their mark in programs like cosmetology, manicure, aesthetics, or as an instructor. Find out more about these exciting cosmetology fields at chattanoogacollege.edu. Chattanooga College, because a small college can make a big difference. It only takes a little time to make a big difference. Join the United Way of Greater Chattanooga as we spend 100 days working with volunteers just like you to commemorate 100 years of bringing kindness to our community. Learn more at 100days100ways.org. Don't let psoriasis get in the way. With Taltz, up to 90% of patients saw a significant improvement of their psoriasis plaques. Some even saw 100% clear skin. Don't use if you're allergic to Taltz. Before starting, get checked for tuberculosis. Increased risk of infections and lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor about infections, symptoms, or if inflammatory bowel disease symptoms develop, worsen, or if you had a vaccine or plan to. Serious allergic reactions can occur. Ask your doctor about Taltz. In this competitive real estate market, whether you're buying or selling, you want to work with the number one team who has literally helped thousands of Chattanoogans more than any other agent, team, or group. Yes, you deserve the best. So go ahead, call us today. So we have stepped off the train and now we're having a chance to talk with Dave Stoika, who is the head end conductor. Yes. Really, you are living every little boy's dream. Yes. You're the man in the cab. Yes, uh, every little boy dreams of driving a train. Now, quick correction, we can't drive, there's no steering wheel, we call it running. Okay. So every little boy dreams of running the train, being in the engine, blowing the horn, ringing the bell. I get to do all of that. <laughs> and they give me money to do it, and too. They, it's a win-win for you. <laughs> it is. It really is. You said that really, in a way, you are the captain of the ship because you don't think about it, but when you see that cab and the layout of it, there is kind of a dividing section where the engineer can only see so much. So you have to be his other set of eyes. Right, right. I am the other. Uh, that's a, a great way to put it. I'm the eyes on the other side of the train because uh, it's so long the engineer can't see both mm -hmm. sides. So that's uh, really the most most important thing I do. I love a backstory. I think that's a lot of fun. So in talking to Robert, I learned that he was a firefighter uh, mm -hmm. in the Atlanta area and then transitioned 18 years ago into this. Josh was a chemistry teacher. Mm -hmm. You too uh, are a, a much beloved teacher in McMinn County of history. So do you feel like you're living it every day? Yes, yes. I get to be on this historic railroad. I get to um, uh, do things that they did back in the 1800s, 19, early 1900s, mm -hmm. go over the same uh, pathway, see the same things. Um, it's uh, really just a, a a wonderful, wonderful experience. When uh, you don't have a chance to really interact a lot with the passengers, I'm sure you hear stories told of uh, the kids that couldn't believe it or uh, the, the lady who perhaps had always dreamed of riding a train and she gets to come with her, her grandchildren or something like that. But do you ever get tired of being the first one to see it? No. You're the first one. No, no. I never get tired of uh, being up in the engine. I never get tired of rolling down the rails and seeing the rails go by mm -hmm. uh, underneath us. A surreal experience every time, and yeah. it's, it never grows old. I, you told me that one of your favorite parts is the trip back, that there's some section where you're coming back around the loop, and everyone, you said, is looking down at the track, but not you. You're looking right. out at the vista. Right. There's a, a, when we go through the loop, there are two levels. And on the up, of course, up higher on the upper level, you can see further. And you, but you can also look down and see the tracks below. Yeah. I've seen that plenty of times, but I can look, I know to look out and there are mountains in the distance in North Carolina that are, are miles away and you can see. And I, that's what really, uh, 
uh, thrills me, just sure. the, the vista that you see that way. So as beautiful as it is, and it is, there is a lot that you're responsible for here. So you don't want people to think that you just stepped on board one day 14 years ago, uh, having been in the classroom and said, hey, I think I'll be your engineer. You learned a lot along oh, yes. the way. Yes, I started out um, uh, at, in the commissary selling snacks, uh, gradually got qualified as a conductor, and uh, it was the way it worked out, Robert would ride in the engine part of the time some days and I would, you know, and I would be back here. Well, he's so popular with his banjo, it just evolved that, well, he's always back in the train with the passengers, I'm always up on the engine. And so uh, I uh, eventually got uh, enough uh, time in and yeah. uh, experience that I got uh, my engineer uh, license a year ago. So you're here part time. Mm -hmm. Do you find that on the days that you're not here, you wonder, gee, I wonder what things are like over at the track? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I'll look at the clock if I have a day off and think, okay, they're at this point now, they're at that point now, and yeah, and, uh, yeah I'm, I'm, my, my mind and heart are always here. A lot of folks are going to go ahead and get a ticket to come on board the train. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite part of the loop that you would encourage them to pay close attention to? Uh, again, just the upper level. Uh, the upper level is... I think because you're higher, you can see more. Yeah. I asked you earlier something, and I'm hoping you can remember what you said to me. I said, do you ever get tired of hearing the oohs and ahs from the eight-year-old little boys on the train? No. Remember what you said? No. I, uh, well, I'm, I'm living every little boy's dream. I understand and relate to that completely, and uh, it, it really... Uh, it, it's a thrill to hear that and to see people so excited to be here and to experience this because it's exci ex excites all of us too. That's why we do it. I know that uh, a lot of folks want to come when the scenery is pretty. Josh made a really good point though about he sell, told us that winter time can be exceptionally pretty. He also told us off camera that if you want to see an eagle, November is your best month. Yes. So would you encourage people, no matter the season, think about j jumping on board? Yes, certainly. Uh, November is a great time because all the leaves have fallen. You can see things you cannot see now because the leaves hide them and the rafters and the kayakers are gone, so the eagles are more apt to come out. So we'll cr frequently see eagles soaring over the river, keeping pace with the train, and, uh, and then they might land and, and or fly up in a tree. But that's very exciting. It has been so nice to talk to you. I don't think I'll ever hear a train whistle again that I won't think about you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> you can get your ticket to the Hiawassee River Scenic Railroad uh, by going online. There is the information on your screen. Really and truly, think about booking a trip. It will be a weekend you will never forget. Thank you, Dave. You're very welcome.